shortly. So uh, this assignment is, and you have another like little final thing. I'll go over that in a sec. Um, but basically, it's like the along for the ride assignment. So you're going to use camera motion to take the viewer along for some kind of ride. Um, a lot of people do like roller coasters or mine carts or like race scenes. Um, whatever it is, like the only super tangible requirement is like you need to use some kind of camera motion uh, in your scene. And that like camera movement should move through the scene and not just do like I'm in one place and like I shake for you know half a second if like there's an impact. Um, so again, shift your camera around your scene uh, and just kind of take people on some kind of ride. Um, this one should be 15 plus seconds long. Uh, and again, you can, camera can move through the scene. Um, I'll show you a few different ways to control your camera today. Um, some of it's just sort of clever grouping. Some of it's like going to go over a little bit of constraint stuff, uh, which if you go to do rigging things in the future, uh, you're going to be real familiar with constraints. Um, and also a little bit with motion paths. Um, and then again, just like suggestions to earn more points, like nice environment, nice lighting. Um, and then this is just like a, a dumb one, but like don't make people throw up or feel nauseous with your camera moves. Um, it's, <laughs> it sounds really, really silly. Um, but like one thing I always look for with this is like, are the camera movements like super, super crazy fast and whippy in a way that people find like unsettling or hard to look at? Um, so just like be aware that, you know, if you move your camera like really crazy or like really fast, um, it can make people feel ill and do try to avoid that. Um, and again, like really great to research the subject matter of your animation. Um, if you're going to do a roller coaster, maybe look at how roller coasters are usually designed. Um, also like I had, so last time I taught this class, I had a lot of people do like roller coasters and they had, um, a track floating in the air with like nothing supporting it in a random field, um, which was a little bit off-putting. Uh, so again, like just make sure that you know whatever you're doing has like supports on it if it's a roller coaster or like that it makes sense. Um, your scenes should still be detailed. Um, other examples of stuff you can do is again like roll or spaceships going through asteroid fields. Um, I was thinking like a dashboard cam on a car. Um, other weird stuff. Mine was, mine was a travesty of an animation, uh, but I, I did attach my camera in like a first-person rat view and have it go through the maze, eat cheese, and then it died in a mousetrap. Um, so feel free to get creative and more morbid with this if you so desire. Um, just be aware that this one is probably going to involve a little bit more in terms of like environment stuff. Um, so again, if you have like a roller coaster, figure out, you know, maybe stuff you can put in your scene that's simple to model, um, but still looks decent and is visually interesting. Um, just so you don't have again like a roller coaster floating in an empty field. I do expect nice environment stuff from this. Um, any questions so far? All right. Yep. Um, question: Are we off for Columbus Day next Monday? Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> um. But yeah, so I'm, I still have like, I'll still have like tutorials and things due and stuff. But yeah, we, we don't actually have class next Monday. Um, if I forgot to say that, I would have sent out an email. I'll probably do that anyway. Um, but yes, so this is still due next week uh, at the normal time. Uh, and you will have another assignment due the week, week five when we get back also at the normal time. And if there's anything that you need for completing that assignment, I'll record some kind of like tutorial that you can watch. Um, by the time you should have had class. Um, any other questions? Cool. Um, thank you for reminding me about that, by the way. Um, so this, this is due next Monday on the, uh, the 14th when we're off just like regular time. Um, I, might, I might bump it to like midnight or something since we don't have class and it kind of doesn't matter. But um, yeah, this is still due next Monday. Um, Cool. So again, point breakdown, um, originality of concept. Um, I do see a lot of like roller coasters and asteroid stuff. Um, so the more creative and out there you get, uh, the more points you get for that. Um, also, just like again, pretty much the same standard. Uh, I did notice the other week that I was doing things, and I'm like, this does not add up to ten. Um, but like model quality and texture quality, 
Um, also things I'm looking for, this one again, specifically for like environment stuff, since that's probably mostly going to be the focus of your animations, theoretically. Um, nice lighting, and then again, camera quality or animation quality. Um, this one I'm mostly looking for, uh, how is the animation of the camera itself? Are you using it in a way that doesn't make people throw up? Um, is there any kind of you know nice secondary motion from the camera? Like if you're jerking it around, maybe there'd be like a little bit of like wiggling to the camera uh, if it's on you know an unstable mount. Um, but also I'm still looking for other like if you have animated stuff in your scene. Um, also, how well is that animated? Um, and then also, please uh, just let me know. Uh, or wait, what was I saying? For submitting stuff, um, just like the standard video, like you guys have been doing. Um, and then also, if you have any you know reference or anything else that you use to create your scene, um, anything like video reference or just like text reference, um, please throw that in as well. And again, that's just to make sure that you guys are actually like. If you're using roller coasters, like researching them and like make sure they have legs, um, that kind of stuff. So, any questions on the how points are broken down, what to submit, anything like that? All right. Um, I think I do actually have a example for this one, unless I'm going crazy. Haha. -ha, yes. Um, yeah. So I have a few. Um, so these are like previous student examples. So this one is just like randomly following a balloon through a scene. Um, and again, so part of the reason, so there's like a few whippy camera moves in this, but part of the reason that this sort of works is because, at least I think, because you have that one balloon that you can sort of like focus your attention on. Um, and like, is always, it's sort of like steady in the frame. Uh, if that weren't there, it does, I think it might actually have a tendency to like make people feel a little bit ill. Um, and then also, again, just looking for like the secondary motion, in this case of the balloon. Uh, it did that little wiggle on the string before it came off, rather than just sort of detaching this like a nice extra little touch. Um, and in this case, it seems like the, they chose a cityscape because the, it's like fairly easy to sort of like duplicate a bunch of buildings and like have them be the same. Um, and contextually, I guess it makes sense to like have a balloon drifting through a city. Um, but yeah. So that's one example of something you could do uh, for the assignment. It's like a little bit different. Uh, and then Um, but they've gone through and they've done nice textures and they had sort of an interesting camera thing where play darn it motion blur which can also sort of help to, uh, so your finals will be required to, to use motion blur. I'm not requiring it for weeklies because it attacks on a bunch of rendering time. Um, but I think in this case it helps because a lot of times I think <laughs> thing like the balloon did or just sort of um, other thing is I believe unless I'm going crazy uh, this is the week where you actually yes good haha uh, start doing s more like tangible stuff with your final uh, so you do have the storyboard that's due this week, so um, you should at this point know, you know, what what scene you're doing, um, and also you can have a little fudge room until you start modeling, but like you should pretty much know what you're doing for your objects at this point. Um, so what you're going to do this week is basically just storyboard your scene and break it down with your objects and your environment 
and then you know have all the other like audio dialogue stuff written in for for what's happening. Um, but basically, you're storyboarding it again with your own environment and your objects just to get a feel for how they might behave in the scene. Um, tweak your camera angles, like if if necessary. Sort of like plan out how you might need to do that if you've chosen something with like significantly different proportions to the original characters. Um, and again, just kind of play with how you're going to represent that uh, in 3D space. So requirements. Uh, at least one drawn frame per, per major action in the chosen clip is like the bare minimum. Um, so if you had like a character jumping, I would qualify that as like kind of a major motion. So like the bare minimum that you could do is like a dude in the air and like an arrow and that like an arrow pointing up and an arrow pointing down and like a text that said jump. <laughs> Um, so that's like the bare minimum I want for the actions, if that makes sense. Um, you don't need to do like every footstep a person does, but like major things happening, major changes in direction, um, major hand movements, stuff like that uh, is something that I would like represented. Um, and again, is you can do kind of, you can go like super crazy and like crazy detailed with this, um, or you could just kind of do the minimum. Um, just do bear in mind, so at the end, uh, you'll be doing a demo reel, which I think I went over. Did I go over that with you guys, like the first week or two of class? No? Okay. Um, basically, it's you're going to be doing like a little breakdown for your final scene, so I'll go over that like just super crazy fast. Um, but it's going to be more or less like a split your screen into four different panels, and you're going to have like your original clip playing alongside your storyboard, playing alongside uh, like a in progress animation playing alongside your final animation. Um, so do bear in mind that like you will need to translate your storyboard into some kind of, you know, sequential series of images that's like put in time to your original clip. Um, and it, it does look significantly nicer if you actually have images and it's not just like one picture sitting there static for like the whole little demo reel breakdown. Does that make sense? All right. Um, cool. Um, and then just uh, do like a single PNG or TIFF of like all your drawn frames organized in some reasonable rational pattern. Um, and then if you could, each drawing should have a neat frame border around it. Uh, and I, I, everyone always asks if, you, if I care if you like hand draw stuff. Um, I really don't care if you you know, would rather draw it like pen on paper, that's totally fine. Um, if you'd rather use a drawing tablet on the computer, that's also fine. Um, but please just do make sure, if you, if you do like hand drawing, make sure it's like decent looking. I know a lot of times people just sort of like scrawl in like really sketchy looking boxes. I'm not saying you need to like break out a ruler, but make sure that they're at least kind of mostly the same size and like straight-ish. Um, and also, just in general, if you guys do hand drawing stuff, um, I am looking for, I actually put it, if you go in these sort of standard formatting guidelines, um, I do have a bit about hand drawn. Um, I think it's actually under, yeah, so like hand drawn reference. Um, this is specifically for orthographics, but like the same thing applies for storyboards and everything else. Um, Ideally, you would scan things into the computer. Realistically, that's a huge pain, and probably most of you don't have access to a scanner. Uh, so you're welcome to just use like cell phone pictures or something like that. Um, just if you do that, I find a good way to avoid getting like a bunch of weird, gross hand shadows in your stuff is if you have like a source of light. So in this case, if me, it's like a computer, or if you had like a window, um, orient yourself so that the light is shining across your paper, and then take a picture there. Um, so that would be like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn the lights on for a second and just like give you guys a quick demo. Because um, it's, it's, I don't know. It's easy, but it like makes everything look so much nicer. So like, imagine that this chalk, or this, whatever this is, is like a giant window or a computer monitor. And I'm trying to like take a picture of my phone or my hand-drawn reference. So what I would do is like, this is shining out this way. Hold your reference at a sort of, again, like 90 degree angle or like perpendicular so the light is shining across it and then take your picture this way. And what that's going to avoid is like giant phone shadows or like weird shading on your image. Because if I did like this, you know, you get like the phone reflection on your paper. Um, so just like try to avoid that, like that awkward shadowing, if at, uh, if at all possible. Um, 
because that's also something that we're like, if you hand draw stuff, I will take points off if it's like, you can't see it because there's awkward shadows along everything. Um, other thing to look at with hand drawn is like, I know I have a really light touch with pencil, so just like make sure that either you trace it with pen or your, your writing is dark enough to actually be visible, et cetera. Um, and the same thing goes for pretty much anything digital. Again, make sure it looks nice and is actually visible. Um, any questions on the hand drawn tangent I just went on? All right. Um, cool. So, do do do. All right. And then again, like I, I'm not expecting like the Mona Lisa for every frame of your storyboard. Um, just make sure it's obvious what's happening. Um, if you're not like super gifted at you know drawing characters or whatever, at least like make like little notes so it's obvious like what I'm looking at and which characters are doing what. Um, and I also don't, so I'm not, I'm not enforcing any kind of like, you must use a standard format for the storyboard or like you need to label your shots in a certain way. Um, do whatever makes sense for you in terms of labeling stuff. Um, I know for me, I usually just don't label anything if it's my personal things. And if it's a personal animation, you're lucky if I do a storyboard at all. Um, so again, just like kind of do whatever makes sense for you. Um, and again, you're welcome to hand draw your frames. Um, apart from that, I'm just grading on are like the you know quality of drawing and notes. Um, can I tell what's happening from if not from your drawings, then at least from like the notes that are happening? Uh, and do you have for sufficient illustration quantity? Do you have enough illustrations to translate the scene properly? Um, specifically, keeping in mind for the demo reel. Um, and again, just submit uh, PNGs or TIFFs with your included storyboards. Um, label them logically and sequentially. If you have multiple images, please label it like storyboard one, storyboard two, storyboard three, so I know what the heck order I'm supposed to look at things at. Um, but yeah, does that make sense for the storyboards? Yep. Sure. I have no objections to PDFs. Cool. Um, any other questions? All right, cool. Um, so those are the assignments that are due next week. Um, I wanna get, do you guys want to do like a three or four minute break and then uh, go into Maya stuff? All right, sweet. Should be back in three or four minutes. <laughs>